Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Game Plan. This episode is all about the Minnesota Vikings versus the New Orleans Saints and Wild Card Weekend. Uh, what I'm going to do, if you're new to this show, I'm going to look at the key injuries for both teams, the key stats and analytics. I put together a path to victory for both the Saints and the Vikings, and we close it out with some fantasy football analytics. Just a reminder to everybody, I'm not a fan of either of these teams. I don't dislike either of these teams. I put these analysis videos together because I do this research for myself. I enter a lot of pick them and against the spread contests, so I come to this without bias. This is my own analysis. I'm pretty successful with that analysis if I do say so myself. Uh, but, you know, if, if you think, uh, you know, I'm throwing shade at your team because, uh, you know, I hate your team or something, that's not the case at all. Uh, before we get rolling here, as I always say, two seconds of your time for two clicks, a like, and a subscribe. It's a little deal for you, huge deal for us. If you could just give us those two clicks, it really goes a long way for us, helping us grow. But let's dig in with those injuries. Um, and I'll say this, Minnesota looks like the healthier team coming in to the matchup. Uh, now, I have Eric Kendricks on this lineup. You know, Noticed uh, for some reason Dalvin Cook and uh, and Alexander Madison are not listed on the injury report. Questionable. Um, I should have them listed there though, but it does look like uh, both of these guys will play, which is good for Minnesota. The New Orleans Saints, Michael Thomas, questionable. He'll play. Um, and I think these guys uh, in the secondary, Apple, Bell, Williams, I think they'll all play as well. But when three fourths of your uh, starting defensive backfield. Uh, are banged up. That's never a good thing. And Minnesota does have the ability to pass the ball. So that will be an interesting storyline. Uh, but let's move on to the key stats. And if you're not, um, uh, again, if you're new to the show, you're not aware, these stats are put uh, position group versus position group uh, in terms of overall yardage accumulation throughout the year. So uh, in practice, basically what that means is the passing offense for Minnesota finished 23rd ranked. Uh, the passing defense for the Saints finished 20th ranked. Uh, conversely, the New Orleans Saints, and remember Breeze was out for like five or six games or whatever it was. Uh, the Saints passing offense finished seventh in the league. Uh, the pass defense for the Minnesota Vikings finished 15th. I would say advantage goes towards the Saints in the passing game, just looking purely at rankings. Now, yes, Minnesota fans, I know that Adam Thielen was out for quite a bit of time, but again, so was Drew Brees. That's a big deal, okay? Again, we're unbiased here. We'll try to keep it that way, right? Um, so the run offense for the Minnesota Vikings, sixth against the Saints, uh, strength of their defense, fourth uh, ranked pass, or I'm sorry, run defense, and then the run offense for the Saints. Interestingly enough, this used to be one of the best running teams of football. Dropped all the way to 16th, but hey, the Saints are pretty darn good, so I'm not complaining too much. Uh, the run defense for the Minnesota Vikings ranked 13th. So again, uh, you know, what I would say is Minnesota's run game, yes, that's their strength as an offense. Uh, that offense would be ranked higher had Dalvin Cook been healthy a full season, but has Dalvin Cook made it a full season yet in his NFL career? He has not, but he is one of the, if not my favorite running back in the league. I'd say he's maybe my top three. I like uh, Nick Chubb. I like, although Nick Chubb is underutilized in my opinion in Cleveland, I like Christian McCaffrey, and then I have Dalvin Cook and Saquon Barkley there. I like Cook better though. Um, so Cook is definitely uh, one of the best running backs in the league, and yes, I am mindful of Ezekiel Elliott. I like those guys better than Elliott. Um, Alvin Kamara too, um, you know, for that matter, I like him better than Elliot. Alvin Kamara is very good. So it's a, it, this is a very interesting matchup. And I'll say this, um, this might be the best wild card teams to play each other in a wild card weekend. I can remember, uh, the New Orleans Saints, and I, this isn't hyperbole for me, they might be the best um, number three seed in the playoffs that I can remember um, in, in in history. And then you look at the, uh, that the Vikings, they're the, uh, what, the sixth seed? And they're just a fantastic team on their own right. Uh, I think that the Saints, it's a real bummer, I think, for Saints fans that you draw a team like Minnesota. I think out of the wild card uh, teams, you know, uh, the New Orleans Saints would match up better with both Philadelphia and Seattle. Uh, Philadelphia, obviously, a division winner, so they wouldn't have been able to play them anyway. But, um, you know, this is probably the worst draw for the Saints. Uh, I don't know what the, the Saints are putting out of the universe but you know, between the officiating and the matchups and all this stuff, they just have some bad, some bad stuff going on. So I feel bad for the uh, the Saints Nation, the Houdat Nation there, um, from that regard. But you know, Minnesota, I, I, I love the coaching staff. I love what they're doing for, as an organization. I'm just disappointed that this isn't a next weekend matchup. This is a, such a quality game. I wish we were getting this into the, the divisional round. But hey, it's something. Let an NFL fan like me, an agnostic fan like me, um, will just 
enjoy watching. This is probably my favorite matchup of the week in the playoffs for sure. Uh, but let's move it over to the key stats, okay? Uh, the key stats, or I'm sorry, the key analytics, I should say. If you're not familiar, basically betters, they have a whole roster sheet of stuff that they look at. But one of the first thing odds makers look at is your efficiency yards per play, your red, down, uh, your red zone conversion percentage, your third and fourth down conversion percentage, both offensive and defensive. Are you giving up a lot of uh, turnovers? Are you giving up a lot of penalties? So I just put all these numbers on one sheet for everybody to take a look at. And uh, as we work our way through it, the Minnesota Vikings offense gains 5.8 yards per play. Their defense gives up 5.2 yards per play. That's a net of about 0.6 yards per play if you're comparing the offensive and defensive units for Minnesota. You look at the New Orleans Saints. Uh, defensively, they give up 5.3. Offensively, they gain 5.9. And remember, you know, both of these teams, I think, are better offensively than that number would indicate. This is season-long data. Minnesota is, is a different team with uh, Adam Thielen and uh, Dalvin Cook at full strength than they are with uh, you know Adam Thielen out of the lineup with a hamstring injury and Dalvin Cook with a messed up shoulder or whatever it is. Uh, the Saints, meanwhile, yeah, this is like six games of Teddy Bridgewater data, which, you know, no disrespect to Teddy Bridgewater at all, but uh, he's no Drew Brees. I mean, that's, you know, Drew, uh, Teddy Bridgewater isn't a Hall of Famer. Drew Brees is, okay? So, um, but when I look at this, if I compare team versus team, let's just t say we take a, an average, right? Uh, Minnesota gains 5.8 uh, New Orleans gives up 5.3. It's a difference of 0.5. So you can figure, uh, you know, the, the Minnesota Vikings can average maybe 5.5, 5.5, 5 5.6 yards per play, something like that. Uh, then you look at the uh, the difference between the Vikings and the Saints. Uh, it's a difference of 0.7, which is a little bit more stark. But again, if you take average, guess what? 5.5, 5.6 in their own right as well. So uh, yards per play, I would say they stack up very well against each other. You look towards situational football, third down, fourth down conversion. Um, offensively, Minnesota, uh, I think, has improved their number over the, over the season. You know, I look at these every week, and I remember this number being a little bit lower. I could be mistaken, but I believe they've been improving as of late. 42.9 conversion rate on first, um, I'm sorry, on third down. Uh, the Saints, meanwhile, 42 Point two. Uh, then you look defensively, it's like 34 versus 39. Very, 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 very slight advantage to New Orleans. You look at fourth down conversion, which doesn't come into play too often, but they're pretty darn close there as well. Now, if you look at the red zone percentage, um, here's where something starts to, to favor the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, their offense scores about two-thirds, well, a little less than two-thirds of the time, 60%, which is nice. And that's indicative of a running team. When you can run the ball well, you generally have a nice um, offensive red zone touchdown percentage. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Saints give up 59 point, uh, touchdown 59.6% of the time. This is a key metric for Minnesota. When they get those drives down the field, it's likely, more likely than not, that they can punch the ball in the end zone. Although, to be fair, New Orleans Saints, uh, I think that one 49ers game uh, where they you know put up their 40 or 50 points kind of skewed those numbers. Um, so it might that number might be a little bit inflated uh, with respect to what they did the rest of their season. Um, you know, if you take that outlier out, I haven't done that, but that percentage might come down still. That is something in favor of uh, of the Minnesota Vikings. And you look, their offense, um, let's see, their offense gets about 60%. New Orleans' offense also gets about 60%, but the, the difference is Minnesota's defense only gives up 43%. So again, that's a that's a pretty good um, that's a pretty good factor going towards the Minnesota side, something you have to take seriously. And again, that's another reason I really feel like this this game is going to be a lot closer closer, <clears throat> excuse me, than that eight point spread. Turnover margin's a little bit close on that penalty yardage, 55 versus 64. Yeah, I don't like to see a team over 60 yards in penalties. Uh, that's on the higher side. I don't love it. Now, the disparity, 10 yards um, over the course of a game, that's not that big of a deal. That's like one instance of moving the chains, for example. But when you see a team um, over 60 yards, that means that they give up uh, longer um, you know, plays. That's when you get into personal foul territory. That's when you get into roughing the passer penalty territory. That's when you get into to pass interference penalty territory. So I don't love that. That's less discipline. Uh, I know New Orleans Saints fans, you'll say you got jobbed by the officials all year. I'm not going to make that argument for or against um, for you, but it is a factor, and it's something that uh, that definitely would favor the Minnesota Vikings as well. But let's just uh, put a pin in that, and let's get over to um, the paths to victory. What I think the path to victory for the Minnesota Vikings would be. 
Um, the running backs uh, versus defensive line. I think that's the whole game, like I was saying before. I would favor, assuming Alexander Madison can play, and he was questionable last week. Um, so he was ruled out after Dalvin Cook was ruled out, and Cook is going to be back this week. I would say, you know, with the, the tough New Orleans Saints running game, and, and their offense is so fantastic, the defense is often overlooked, I think, in New Orleans. This defensive line is very good. The run, this, the ability to stop the run and make teams one-dimensional and let, you know, Cameron Jordan, these guys, like, try to rush the quarterback— it's a very, very good thing. So what Minnesota has to do is they have to stick with that run, even if it's slow going at the at the beginning. And I think they got to use Alexander Madison. If Madison can't go, use Boone. Use somebody to attack the middle of the defensive line. Um, and I would say utilize uh, Dalvin Cook more off tackle, uh, more on uh, sweeps, more out of the backfield in the screen game. Try to keep him fresh and try to run somebody else for that physical yardage as many times as you can. Now, I'm not saying take Dalvin Cook completely out of that role, but you know try to keep Dalvin Cook as fresh as you can and uh, uh, let's keep that shoulder healthy. Uh, let's see. Expect Lattimore, I would think, to line up against Thielen. If the, is that going to happen? I don't know. Maybe they want to take Diggs out and double cover Thielen. That's a popular strategy as well. If I'm uh, the New Orleans Saints, I believe that they will lock up uh, Lattimore onto Thielen. Um, and make digs beat beat the double coverage. And if Lattimore is properly motivated, I believe he will be. And Thielen has kind of one of those down games with Lattimore just kind of playing up to his ability. It's going to be tough sledding for uh, for Minnesota. They're going to really have to rely on Dalvin Cook, I think. Uh, Minnesota has the statistical advantage, I would say, in red zone just barely. Um, but they need uh, they need to force more field goals from New Orleans uh, than touchdowns. I mean, that's that's not rocket science. Uh, you know, you're better off getting uh, I'm sorry, giving up three points than seven points. But you need to you need to basically um, take advantage of every opportunity that you have on the road. And if you can get out to a, jump, a quick lead and kind of try to quiet that crowd down, all the better. Uh, let's see here. Outside of Lattimore, uh, New Orleans sector, secondary is banged up. So if I'm Minnesota, um, I'm thinking that uh, first of all, Thielen Thielen going to have to win that matchup if he does draw Lattimore. If he's drawing double coverage, he has to win that matchup. Cousins needs to take shots to uh, Thielen no matter what. Um, but, you know, if one of these guys is completely locked down, uh, BC Johnson or, or somebody else um, in the passing game, and I'm, I'm saying not outside of... Um, um, Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith. Somebody outside needs to uh, step up uh, and then try to hold Michael Thomas to under 12 receptions. He's going to get catches. Um, and Minnesota has had trouble locking down elite receivers this season. Uh, this game projects pretty well for Michael Thomas. Try to to limit that bleeding um, from just, just a wonderful connection between Drew Brees and Michael Thomas, a historical connection, to be honest with everybody out there. And that's not hyperbole either. That's not hype. This is an, a historical connection. Um, um, partnership that we're seeing between Brees and Mike, Michael Thomas. It's incredible. Uh, for New Orleans Saints, their path to victory, stop Dalvin Cook. That's it. If you can shut down Dalvin Cook, make Kirk Cousins try to beat, um, you know, uh, basically your banged up secondary, I think that's going to bode well for New Orleans. I think New Orleans can outscore Minnesota if it turns into a shootout. Um, New Orleans does not want that to happen, but I think that New Orleans in a shootout is going to be better because I think they'll generate more sacks and I think they'll generate more turnovers than Minnesota would be able to generate with Drew Brees, um, the most accurate passer I can remember since uh, Peyton Manning's computer-like season, I think back in the mid-2000s. Uh, matching up against, uh, I, I should say, uh, Lattimore and Thielen again, um, I think that also bodes well. That's what I would do, tactically speaking. I don't want to double cover um, Adam Thielen. I want to lock him out with my cornerback. Uh, I don't know how healthy, I don't know if he's 100% with that hamstring. I think he might be. Uh, you know, fans would know a lot better than I would, um, but I don't see any limitation there. That said, I don't know if he has the extreme burst that he might have had at the beginning of the season, but then again, it's the NFL, who does have that burst that they do in week one? Uh, the red zone uh, defensive percentage uh, is one of the worst in, among playoff teams. Uh, so Minnesota's big play potential combined with their ability to punch the ball um, it's going to be tough. So it starts with stopping Cook, um, but Minis or I'm sorry, New Orleans needs to limit the touchdowns uh, for Minnesota. And then uh, this game is tailor made, like I said, for Michael Thomas. So just get him the ball early and often. And uh, I, I do think he's going to get in the end zone once or twice this game. So Minnesota um, has to stop it, and New Orleans has to exploit it. And I think it'll be good. So let's get over to the fantasy football projections from old Rockobot here. Uh, once again, Rockobot is my computer algorithm. I just named Rockobot. It's my computer algorithm to help me 
make uh, daily fantasy selections. But Kirk Cousins, a fringe start budget-wise, I think he'd probably be a decent play this week. Uh, Dalvin Cook, I think, is a definite start. Gets in the end zone. Madison, I don't love uh, this week, especially coming off an injury. Uh, Thielen and Diggs, I would start both of them because I think they'll get volume, and New Orleans will do well to limit the running potential there. So I think both receivers will be utilized. Uh, Johnson, Kyle Rudolph, I don't love. The defense and special teams... Uh, look, I don't. It, it's projected well um, by Rockobot, but I don't like the Saints playing at home. I don't like that offense. I don't like the potential for Michael Thomas to have a huge game. I probably stay away from the Vikings defense. So I disagree with Rockobot a little bit there. Now on the New Orleans side, Drew Brees. I think he has a nice game. I think he's probably going to be a little bit too expensive for me in daily fantasy. Uh, but he and Cousins are projected similarly. Now, if I were just playing in a fantasy football league, I would like Drew Brees to score more, and I think he will score more. But remember, for daily fantasy, there's a budget call there. Uh, Alvin Kamara. I think I think he has a nice game. Murray, not so much. Uh, Michael Thomas, I think, has a very, very nice game this week. Like I said, one to two touchdowns. I would like to see Ted Ginn um, or Traquan Smith. I'd like to see one of these guys step up consistently and try to relieve some of the pressure uh, off of uh, Michael Thomas in the passing game. I can't believe that Drew Brees is so efficient with Michael Thomas when he, <laughs> with with just not a, a, a normal good secondary receiver, that Antonio Brown kind of nonsense that we saw last week, if they signed a, a good second receiver there, I, I think they might be my favorite team going to the Super Bowl. As it stands, I believe the New Orleans Saints are ranked two in my power rankings. Uh, Jared Cook, uh, I do believe as a start this week, 10.7. I like that projection. And defense and special teams, 7.1. I would roll the dice on that because I don't know what I'm getting from Minnesota um, in terms of their running game. I don't know how healthy Dalvin Cook is. I haven't seen him in a couple weeks. And the Minnesota Vikings need him. And if they don't, then it turns into Kirk Cousins trying to press the ball a little bit more downfield, which again, from a fantasy point of view, that lends itself to sacks and turnovers. And that's what you want for a defense. I'd rather have uh, sacks and turnovers than a you know, a lower scoring game. The sacks and the turnovers is where you make your hay, especially in daily fantasy. So there you go. There's my uh, my preview for the Minnesota Vikings and the New Orleans Saints. We're doing all the playoff games this week, so be sure to check out one of the videos. Everybody, as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Um, you know, I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody's team, so I know uh, Minnesota Vikings fans are going to be a little bit irked because I do think the Saints will win the game. But tell me why I'm wrong. I'd love to hear it, and uh, let's have a discussion. And until next time, good luck to both teams. Good luck to both fan bases and we'll talk about one of you guys next week and we'll uh, certainly be back talking more wild card episodes uh, or on another episode this week so check us out thanks